Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Human Comedy 1 Hour Endurance Race series. Today we're going to be focusing on the 1 Hour Endurance Race at the Red Bull Ring. For this race you're limited to using Group 3 cars and my car of choice was the M6 GT3. For this race there is going to be quite a lot of heavy rain so issue a 3 stop strategy. First kit is going to be on lap 9 where we don't change tyres and fully refuel. Next one is lap 19, where we're going to change to fully wet tyres and refuel. And then last one is going to be lap 29 or lap 30 for medium tyres. Now when it comes to starting this race, we're going to be starting in 15th. But there's many cars in front of us that will break quite early when it comes to the braking zones. So if we break in our normal place, we'll be able to make up quite a few spots as you're going to see here. Beauvoir in first place is ridiculously fast on this race so there's no way we're going to catch him before the rain comes so you don't have to worry about getting first. All you need to do is focus on getting some good solid fast laps in and we will naturally overtake him when it comes to completing our pit stops. If you've not raced Red Bull Ring before there's certain areas of the track where you can easily pick up penalties like for me here I could have easily avoided this if I would have just turned left a little bit or kept the steering wheel straight but instead I decided to turn right and pick myself up a one and a half second penalty. Another example of an area where it's really easy to go off is the next part of the track here between the final two corners. If you get your braking down wrong you will pick yourself up another penalty as you can see here I picked up another second. And at the end of lap 9 is where we're going to come in for our first pit stop. For this one we don't need to change tyres. We're just going to fully refuel. We'll now run through my fastest lap. As we're approaching the first corner, we're breaking at the 100 meter board. As we're approaching turn three, we're breaking at the 120 meter mark and down into first gear. Turn 4, braking at the 100 meter mark. You can go down into first here, but I prefer to stay in second gear. And for turn 6, braking just before we get to the 50 meter board, roughly 70 meters, and we're going down into second. Use as much red and white curbing as you can on the right hand side here to give you a better exit, which we're braking slightly for and going down into second. We're going to try and position the middle of our car on the red and white curbs. Or turn 9, braking just before we get to the marshals on the left hand side. And for turn 10, we're braking just before we get to the two yellow markers on the left hand side of the track. And that completes my fastest lap, which was a 130.8. When you get to around the lap 16 mark, you'll notice that it is now a lot darker. And if we're looking at the weather radar, the weather is slowly beginning to change. Now we're on lap 18, and for me, this is where the rain was imminent. But I've also noticed as well that I am just, I've got just over a, one lap left of fuel. And I'm going to try and hold off for as long as I can until the wet weather actually arrives. As I don't want to completely destroy my wet tyres by racing on a dry track. As we're about to start lap 19, I crank my fuel map all the way up to 5, just to be sure that we have enough fuel to complete this lap. Again, does, does it matter about, doesn't matter about losing time to the cars in front or behind, because we're going to end up winning this race by a country mile due to having the right pit strategy anyway. Looking at the weather radar, we're going to time this pit stop 
perfectly to coincide with the wetter weather. Now remember on this pit stop we're going to pit for wet weather tyres and we're going to completely refuel. One thing that I did notice was that the AI around me pitted for intermediate tyres and if we're looking at the damp meter on the left hand side it's quite clearly full wet conditions. So this just means on the next lap the AI are going to do another pit stop this time putting wet tyres on so this just proves that going on wet tyres in the first place was the right core and we've avoided an unnecessary pit stop. I'm not going to show you a whole wet lap if this is something that you you're not interested in then that's fine you can I'll have this uh, highlighted as a video chapter so you can just skip past it and skip to the next time we perform pit stop but if you are interested then obviously you can watch it and see how it differs to a dry lap Now looking at the weather radar again we can see that the wet weather is going to be coming to an end soon. We're hoping that in around two laps time the rain stops and it starts and the track will start to dry out. And sure enough in the middle of lap 25 the rain is about to end. But we're going to be staying on, wet, on these wet weather tyres for a little bit longer yet until we can start to see a dry line forming. For me it wasn't until lap 28 that we had a clear definitive dry line on track. So if this happens to you, lap 28, lap 29, lap 30, those are the optimal laps for you to come in and perform your pit stop. For me personally, I wanted to go all the way to lap 30 just to get to the end of this stint. Probably could have come in right there on lap 29, but we decided to go again. And here we are, lap 30, just over 11 minutes left, and we barely have enough fuel to complete this lap. This is our final pit stop, putting on racing medium tyres, and we're going to fully refuel. When you're at the exit of the pit stop, just be careful accelerating too much, because this area of the track is going to be damp, and obviously you're going to be on stuck tyres, so you're not going to have optimum levels of grip. For the next 10 to 12 minutes you just need to stick to the dry line, avoid the wet parts of the track as much as possible and you should be able to come home in first place with quite a healthy lead to second place. For getting first in this Red Bull Ring Challenge you will earn yourself 1.2 million credits. And there we have it. Seventh one hour endurance race completed. On the left hand side will be a link to all the Gran Turismo 7 missions and on the right will be a link to the final one hour endurance race when it's posted.